Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to set a fuel trail on fire. So uh, I'm currently using Phoenix 4.4 but uh, for this effect uh, you can use a much older version of Phoenix so uh, you could do this uh, all along with Phoenix. So let me just show you how it works. So I'm going to create uh, this spline that's going to emit the fuel trail like this and uh, enable it in the viewport offset it a bit and uh, I'm gonna make it thicker and I'm going to convert this to an editable mesh so I'm going to link this to a fire source change it to a uh, to volume brush mode in order to emit the fuel. So if I start the simulation right now, it's going to start emitting temperature and smoke. So I'm going to uncheck these, enable fuel, and uh, I also have to enable fuel here in the output rollout, like this. So if I start the simulation now, now the uh, the curve emits fuel, I'm going to stop emitting uh, right here on the second frame. So I'm going to key the brush effect down to zero. I'm just going to extend my timeline. And so uh, right here you have the fuel buoyancy option. So for example, I can make the fuel uh, run down or even upwards as well. So if you want to make it uh, behave like liquid, you can set the fuel buoyancy to some negative value. So I'm going to just leave it at zero so it would just uh, float in the air. Uh, just for uh, this quick demonstration, we don't need anything more special than this. So I'm going to create this sphere right here, uh, which is going to be kind of like uh, the match for the fire. So I will create a second source. Pick the sphere. So by default, it's going to emit temperature and smoke. And I will enable burning right here. Okay, so if I start the simulation, uh, everything can happen interactively. So I will just introduce this sphere into the simulation. And as I move it closer to the fuel, you can see that it would start igniting. So let me just switch to the GPU preview. And I will also increase the scene scale because right now we have a simulator which is one meter by one meter. So I'm going to make it 10 times larger. Okay, so here it is. Uh, so uh, by default, under the fuel rollout, we have uh, the ignition temperature of 600. So you can see that uh, here the fire source creates uh, 2000 kelvins. So uh, this would be quite enough to set the fuel on fire. Also, there are other options here, like the uh, uh, like the energy emitted from the fire. So if I increase it more, you can see that it starts burning uh, with white hot fire. So also we have the propagation. If I increase this, uh, the uh, burning fuel would start expanding. So uh, you can also control the explosive effect of the simulation like this. So it would create a lot more, a lot more fire, and uh, it would just uh, start uh, start expanding and ex like exploding along the way. So we have the smoke amount here. So if I zero it, uh, you see that uh, we will be emitting just temperature and also. Uh, one important thing for the uh, for the burning process is that uh, 
if a voxel is full of fuel, for example, if we emit a fuel amount of one here from the source, so uh, if a voxel is is full of fuel, it cannot burn, so it would uh, it, it it would not have enough oxygen to actually burn. So uh, a voxel has to be like a half full of fuel, and as it burns, it would create temperature and it would also create smoke. So if if the smoke is too much, burning would be suppressed again. So uh, the ideal conditions for burning are where a voxel has uh, some amount of fuel and just a little smoke, but not too much, so that uh, the temperature uh, can occupy the rest of the voxel. So that's pretty much the logic of the uh, Phoenix uh, fuel and burning mechanics. So thank you for watching.